Hello, everybody. What a wonderful turnout. I, before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody got their wrists measured for the, uh, the handcuffs when the FBI swoops in to take us all away. We all got our wrists measured, right, when we came in? I'm a medium. It's hilarious. You're right. So listen, I want to lay out some ground rules before we get started here. Number one is that there are uniformed officers here who you, you, I demand that you respect, you're kind to, you're respectful to, and you're obedient to. They're here to keep us safe. We're counting on them to do that, and we know that they will. There's also many members of the media here. And I, I make the same request. I make the same request of them. You see somebody, the member of the media, be kind and respectful. They may ask you if you'd like to be interviewed. Now, if you're not used to this, I would recommend that you don't because we've gotten a lot of misrepresentation. They're trying to say that this is a rally in support of uh, the violent people who attacked and killed police officers on January 6th, and that is absolutely not what this is about. And that has been misrepresented continuously. So we condemn violence, political violence in all of its forms. We don't want any today, and we condemn the political violence that happened on January 6th. Anybody who engaged in that kind of violence or property destruction that day, deserves to be tried with a speedy trial and found guilty locked up for a long time. There's no argument from anybody on our side on this issue. This is about the many people who were there that day who have not been charged with violence, not been accused of assaulting a police officer, destroying property, and the disparate treatment they've received. This is about equal treatment under the law. This is about a public investigation into many of the things that happen that have not been investigated publicly or third-party oversight, especially the death of Ashley Babbitt. And this is about transparency, because we have a real issue with transparency in the aftermath of January 6. Thousands and thousands of hours of videotape denied, not just from us, but from defense attorneys who need it. Mysterious investigations into Capitol Police officers' behavior Ambiguous press releases saying that some were sanctioned for something, but we're not going to say what it is. This is unheard of in police departments across the country. Or if it's not, it should be. And it should be same here with the Capitol Police. So we condemn all violence, political violence. I'm demanding that you all are respectful and obedient to police officers today. In fact, I'd like to start off. Can we please have a round of applause for the many police officers who are here today? We respect you. We know you have a tough job. We're not your enemy. And God bless you all. Now, what this protest is not about, it's not about President Trump. It's not about President Biden. It's not about the election. It's not about what you think happened with the election. It's not about any fringe third-party group. I already politely requested that a group that I saw with a off-message flag take it down. They were very respectful. They did that. I'm grateful. This is about justice and disparate treatment and equal treatment under the law. And I understand, I'm going to speak to the many people in the audience who look at us and say you're just Insurrection 2.0. I understand, I understand that you hate President Trump and everything about his administration. I get it, I get it. And I'm not here to argue with you about that, okay? But that doesn't mean you have to hate what we're standing for today. It doesn't mean you have to hate our cause and what we're representing. That hatred is blinding you to a grave injustice being perpetrated by our government against many of our fellow citizens. And I swear to you, if this was the other way around, if this had happened to the other political party, I swear to you I would be here today doing the exact same thing. And so would our supporters. So uh, we're going to have a prayer to start things off. And what's a very important part of this prayer is when we're America first, we mean it. We start with a prayer, we do the pledge, we have the anthem. Included in this prayer is prayers for the Capitol Police officers who've lost their lives in the aftermath of January 6th, for the many people who died on January 6th, and that's extremely unfortunate. We regret that. That shouldn't happen, and they are, they are close to our hearts and deep in our prayers. So we're going to open up with a prayer from my good friend, Ned. Ned, why don't you come up here? Good afternoon. I'd like a moment of silence for the uh, Americans and the police officers that uh, perished on uh, J6 
You can bow your heads and give them a, a couple minutes of silence and ask for God to bless them. Amen. I ask, dear Lord, that you bless this crowd, that you bless these people, no matter which side of the political spectrum you're on, that you understand and know that God is in our presence and that we understand and feel his presence in our lives and accept his peace and his goodness and his love in our lives. I pray that all of you get home safely tonight and that today you will learn and understand another side of the story. I pray for the police that are here, that they also return to their families tonight unharmed and safe. And I pray for these United States, our leaders, our people. Dear God, help us as a nation and a people. Help us to overcome all of the differences that, that strike between us. Help us to live you and to live, to love and to serve you as your servants and to come together as one nation, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Help us, dear Lord, to put aside our troubles and put aside all of the things that, that come between us. And I pray for the J6 patriots who are still locked up in prison, that are, not, that are denied their rights, who are merely political prisoners. May you find the grace and the strength. May they find the strength and the goodness and feel your love to overcome their hardships that they're now enduring. And may they have the rights that they are guaranteed under our constitutions. And I pray especially for the men and women of our armed services. May you watch over them, help them, and guide them. Hold them and their families in your hands and protect them as they protect us. Bless them and their families for the selfless acts they do in our time of need. In these words, I pray to you, Jesus Christ, or whatever God you believe in, amen. 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 And uh, you're going to lead us in the pledge, right? Yes, I'll do the pledge. Okay. Do you want me to? Uh, yeah, and now we're going to have Ned lead us in the pledge, so thank you. There we got a flag right there. Okay. The Pledge of Allegiance. Hold the flag up, my friend. Hold the flag up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Now, this is a little bit of a different turnout than we had several months ago at the Department of Justice. Who here was at that rally? And I recognize some faces. Now, who here was at the rally we had at the prison? A little bit of a bigger crowd. We actually have one person who was also here, or a couple, that were also with us at the United Nations a few weeks ago. Can we hear from you all? But you see the crowd now, and this is because of persistence. Our message is reaching our fellow American citizens. We already have poll numbers that show essentially half of the public believes that the government is holding political prisoners. That came from Rasmussen. And it's not, it's not partisan. 45% of Democrats agree with that. In fact, yesterday, I had a wonderful interview, which is, uh, you can see the full live stream, because I don't chop it up, put the live, full live stream up with my good new friend from MSNBC, Miss Yasmin. And after the interview, a guy who had watched the whole thing, I've never recognized before, came up and started to be rather critical of the line of questioning, saying that it was completely misrepresenting what this rally was about, that they can't paint every person hitting a police officer with uh, a fire extinguisher, or violence like that, or destroying doors or other property with the people who walked in a few hours later not knowing what they're doing and are now domestic terrorists. They can't be painted with the same broad brush. And what was interesting to me is he said, look, I'm a liberal Democrat. This, is about, this isn't about President Trump or Biden or your political party. This is about human rights and this is about civil rights. And I'm going to bring somebody up to say the pledge who has been persistent and consistent with us. She's been at all of our rallies. Uh, Ms. Monk, will you please get up here, I'm sorry, and sing the national anthem for you. She has a beautiful singing voice. And she's actually, and look, this touches on many other issues. When we were at that prison, we also said a prayer for the many others incarcerated who have nothing to do with J6, who've been abused in the prison system, and I'm sure it's endemic everywhere. And this is an issue that should concern every moral human being. And it's something that concerns me, and I know many of the, or all of our Look Ahead America supporters here. And she is a champion for this cause here in D.C., she wasn't necessarily on her side politically, but she saw the treatment of those people on January 6th in the prison right now, particularly those who have not been charged with violence. And she's been a longtime advocate for the many people held in that prison, really proud to have her joining forces with us. 
Mrs. Monk, please sing a beautiful national anthem like I know you can. I just want to first say thank you to Matt, and I don't just mean thank you for that interview or that introduction. I want to say thank you for the work you, that you are doing on behalf of American citizens who are over in that detention center right now. And I want to also want to let you know, for everybody who thinks that your voice doesn't matter, that you can't do anything. Well, me and a small group of people like Matt have been fighting since April, since March, since January to get awareness to not only these inmates for January 6th, but the torment that is going on in our detention center due to the COVID protocols. They are forced vaccinating people. They are coercing people by keeping them in solitary confinement. And they've been doing that all year. We fought, we called Congress, we wrote letters, we went on interviews, and I got four, we got four members of Congress to go knock on the door. They were turned away by the fascists who run that prison. But we moved Congress with phone calls so you can do it too. Never give up your ability and your voice to make a difference. This country is for all of us. It's for all of us Americans on the right and on the left, everyone who loves freedom, everyone who believes that freedom still lives under that flag I'm going to sing about right now. Okay. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star enough to be here today. Well, that's incredible. Really appreciate that, Ms. Monk. Um, so now, uh, one of the common features of many of our rallies so far is presentations and hearing from family members who've been victimized. And uh, to narrate that, I want to introduce somebody who's been a partner in my journey on this. Somebody who, like me, recognized the problem and stood up. They didn't follow, they stood up and led. And that's Cara Castroneva. She, she started an organization called Citizens Against Political Persecution, all on her own. And she grew that group. They've had significant rallies. I've cooperated with them. We've done rallies and events together. And I, I can't tell you how much respect I have for her courage. She recognized the problem, and she used the First Amendment and her constitutional rights and our democratic tools to do something about it. That is the model of America First community organizing. So please welcome her to the stage. Thank you.
Hey, everybody, and thank you for coming out today. My name is Kara Kastanova. I am the founder of Citizens Against Political Persecution, and I would like to personally thank Matt for organizing this day today, which, take a look around. Do you see an insurrection? Who watched the news this week? Who read the media? Who was who terrified to come here? You know, shame on the people in the system that put fear in the hearts of American citizens to stay home and to not come out. Many whom have called me and messaged me begging and pleading for me to stay home because they fear for my life and my freedom. What kind of America has this become when people are afraid to come out and protest? This is a peaceful protest. And before I, I present some information to you later on, I would like to introduce one of the family members of the detainees in D.C. jail, who is right now, as we speak, being held in solitary confinement. Her name is Kelly. She's the girlfriend of Jonathan Mellis. I would like to bring her to the stage. Kelly. And she's going to read a letter. So everybody, please welcome Kelly. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you for coming today to stand up for the First Amendment um, and human rights across the country. I'm here for Jonathan Mellis, but I'm going to read another letter that was written by somebody's mother who actually shares a wall with John and um, is subject to the same torture, including, uh, <laughs> well, John's in solitary confinement, and he has been for no reason. That's a whole story. Uh, but last night they, for dinner, they were served four pieces of white bread, a cookie, and a packet of tartar sauce. According to them, that's a nutritious meal, and they violated their own rule book on multiple occasions. So I think America needs to become very well versed in the treatment of these men. It's human rights that we're talking about, and it's completely nonpartisan. Amen. Amen. Dear Matt Brainerd, I just got off the phone after speaking to my son. He's a January 6th detainee in the Gulag of D.C. Over the months, I have heard of the horrors these U.S. citizens and veterans are being subjected to. Today, I have found out some more indignities forced upon them. He told me he's not allowed to shave or cut his hair. It's been seven months now with no shave or haircut. As a veteran, he is supposed to be meeting with a veteran representative weekly. He has yet to meet with one. How can our country treat its citizens and veterans in such a manner? As a mother, my heart is broken. I am quickly losing all confidence in our great nation. Initially, he was granted bail, redacted, only to have it overruled by a judge in D.C. This judge made a statement that she wants all federal judges to be hard on the insurrectionists. How is this allowed? He's not being charged with any violent crime. He's lost his job, lost friends, family, is in, and is in the process of losing his home. He's denied visits from family. His jailers treat these men like scum. There's absolutely no presumption of innocence. I just wanted to let your organization know of the terrible conditions these brave men are being subjected to. Even death row inmates get haircuts and are allowed to shave. This reminds me of how the Jewish people were treated by the Nazis. I have never thought I would live to see such treatment in the United States. I have watched some of your rallies and wish I could afford to attend. I know that you sometimes read letters by family members. If you should happen to read this letter, please don't reveal his name. I don't want any retaliation to be given to him. Thank you for all of your efforts, and please keep up the good fight. Sincerely, a concerned mother. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. God bless America. Next up, I'm going to introduce Jeff Zink. He's the father of one of the political persecuted, one of the political detainees. And I can't imagine what it would feel like to be a parent and have a child in prison right now being held in solitary confinement with no bail, thinking that you brought this kid up in America where there's a constitution and there's due process, and now your son or your daughter is being held in prison with no bail indefinitely. So I would like to bring Jeff Zink up. He is the father of a political, political prisoner. Everybody give a hand for Jeff Zink. Good afternoon, everybody. How are y'all doing? First and foremost, I want to tell you that uh, I was here on January 6th. I condemned the violence. I condemned the things that took place that were not American, not patriotic. This America is about peaceful protest, and that's what I uh, expect all of us to do as well. So why are we here? It seems that this uh, place has decided and the government has decided to start suppressing American citizens their First Amendment rights. 
They can't speak out. It's times like these that good men and women need to stand up that are called by God. What happened on January 6th? I can give you a first-hand account. We, the people, came to hear a message. What we came to do is to go and peacefully let our voices be heard. As Matt said earlier, this is not about Trump. This is not about Democrat or Republican. This is about right and wrong. How are we going to effectively make change? We must speak for those that are silent. We must bring light to what is happening to the prisoners and our fellow American citizens. My son was with me 100% of the time on J6. When the FBI came to my doorstep, and interrogated me for an hour and a half. They cleared me of any wrongdoing that they couldn't find one ounce of uh, evidence to hold me. However, my son on February the 4th had his door kicked in by 15 FBI agents, flash banged him and his dog, and put him on the floor and, and handcuffed him and dragged him out of his house. My son has also lost his job and his home because of this. He was incarcerated for six weeks in D.C. until we finally got an uh, a, uh, attorney to get him out. So he is out of the prison, but what he told me that happened inside there was the fact that they had cells with black mold on the corners that they were not allowed to see, his, he was not allowed to see his attorney or his family members. He went as many days as five without shaving or showering. I have personal video of another gentleman who was actually breaking windows, and I provided that video to the FBI. It wasn't until August the 14th that he was actually arrested. He was identified as Hunter Empty in California. His only deal that he did was is that by actually physically breaking the law, and I provided the Capitol Police with my card and information, and he did not, uh, they didn't arrest him. But all my son did was video him, and he ended up being incarcerated. It is times like these that good men and women have got to start standing up. We need to start saying, no more. God tells us to walk boldly in this world and not to fear anything at all. Again, it is times like these that good men and women of God have got to stand up. Proverbs 29 tells us that when the righteous rule, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. How many people have been groaning lately? This government wants to keep us silent. They want us out of the way. I will not be one of those that are going to be silent. I am not going to be afraid. I will not bow down. My name is Jeff Zink, and it's time for people like you to stand up and start talking for these people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jeff. So we had another guest. She was unable to make it. A crazy story. Her, no, her name is Nicole Riffitt. And she was flying here, and she was detained at the airport, brought to her hotel room. Her computer was trashed by the FBI, and she was unable to attend. So I don't know. Do the math. I just found that out. It's crazy. She was supposed to be guest speaker. Her computer was trashed by the FBI. Okay? You can't make this stuff up, guys. The FBI came to my house twice for peacefully protesting at the Capitol.
I was nowhere near the building, and I've, I've been terrorized twice by the FBI, and that's left an indelible mark on my mind, and it makes me want to fight harder for the other people that are being persecuted. So, thank you. I'm going to read Kelly's, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm going to read Nicole's letter so it, that she had to write and send us via a text message because she no longer has a computer because it's now in possession of the FBI. Her, she said, my husband, political prisoner, 376782, Guy, is named Guy Reffitt. He was arrested for rhetoric and charged with a thought crime. He has been held in solitary for over 48 hours at a time. He has spent over five weeks without representation, eight days in ICU due to lack of care for his medical needs, and little or no religious material or fellowship. No oversight of his civil liberties or, or safety. He is deemed an extremist, a domestic terrorist. Hell, we are all, if you listen to the media, but for what? A political ideology? And even with all that, I consider us blessed. Guy gets to have his day in court. Ashley Babbitt and Roseanne Boyland, who we will talk about later, did not get that chance. Say their names. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boyland. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boyland. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boylan. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boylan. Ashley Babbitt, Roseanne Boylan. Thank you. And I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Roseanne Boylan in a little while and how the media said she died of a drug overdose, and that is absolutely false. They, they, okay, back to uh, Nicole's letter. They matter. And today we give a voice, as well as to my guy. The false narrative of January 6th being an insurrection when no, not one person has been charged with this crime, is doing nothing but tampering with a potential jury pool and perpetrating fear when in reality, the only thing to fear is being complacent. But they, the mainstream media, the corrupt politicians, want us to be scared, to fear coming to our own nation's capital to exercise a First Amendment right that was promised by our forefathers and criminalized by the current administration. But we, the people, will not be afraid, whether it is 1776 or 1621. We are people. We, the people, are the guardians of our own sovereignty, not the government. Not the mainstream media, but we, the people. We, the people, have been lied to about leaving our fellow Americans in Afghanistan. We have been lied to about our national security, our border, and even our health and that they're lying about our patriots rotting in D.C. jail without due process. We are being used as examples to not resist, to not speak up, or this will happen to you. Trust me when I say this. This can and will happen to you if we the people continue to accept the status quo. They cannot lock us all up. They cannot shut us all up because we the people are going nowhere. That's right. When our declaration was signed with the blood of our forefathers, we inherited liberty, liberty that has been promised to all future generations, and we the people will not give that gift away. Guy came to D.C. for a redress of his grievances like hundreds of thousands of others that day, which is the right of all Americans. But the simple truth is, is that, is that it's only your right if your ideology falls in line with that of the status quo. That is not what our forefathers and others have given up their all for, okay? We the people will not be intimidated. We will not retreat. We the people will not leave our patriots to waste away in jail without a voice, without liberty. Give it up for the letter from Nicole, Prof uh, Nicole Prophet, who unfortunately was unable to make it today. It was a powerful letter, and it was an honor to read it because her computer was taken by the FBI, and she's now on a no-fly list for coming to D.C. to peacefully protest and to speak on behalf of her loved one who was in D.C. prison. Let them go! Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Okay, guys.
So I'm going to dedicate this speech. I'm going to make, try to make my speech fast. I had a lot of stuff to say, but you know what? Go to my website, www.citizensapp.us or www.thepeoplesjanuary6commission.com if you want to find out some truth that I've been investigating. I now consider myself an investigative journalist, and I'm asking you and the mainstream media to listen to what I'm saying because stuff that the government has told you that you have been reporting, and I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you didn't know, has been inaccurate. As we all know, there was one death that day, a homicide that day, and that was Ashley Babbitt. But there was another woman that day that the media said died of a, died of a methamphetamine overdose. That is absolutely not true. She had a, a prescription to Adderall, and the only other drug in her system, according to her autopsy report, was caffeine. I have uncovered video. And like I said, go to my website and media if you're interested. If you want to tell the truth, you can come up to me afterwards. I'll show you the video. I'll give you the link to the video of Roseanne Boylan being beaten severely as she lay unconscious on Capitol steps by a, 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 DC, a Metro DC police officer who I have identified and I know her name. And if you want to go on my website, you can find that out. Okay, so Roseanne Boyland, we, we want to know her name now like we know Ashley Babbitt's name. This needs to break into the mainstream media. There is video of police brutality. I back the blue. I support the police. But when a police officer does wrong, that police officer needs to be held accountable. And amen. And all the other police that are here today need to agree with me on that, that an investigation needs to be held. There needs to be a real investigation, not a fake investigation like Nancy Pelosi is having, a real investigation into the death, the four deaths that day that they say were natural causes, and we have reason to believe to ask for an investigation that perhaps they were not. Again, go on my website and see video on that. I have one last message, and I'm going to direct this to Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi, who made a statement to the mainstream media that people should not come to this rally today and support killers. To Nancy Pelosi, I hope you're watching or that someone sends you this video. I want to address you directly. We're both women, we're both U.S. citizens, and we both have the same unalienable rights protected under the same Constitution. How dare you tell me or other Americans that love their country not to attend a peaceful protest to advocate against the abuses being perpetrated on U.S. citizens for the events of January 6th. I take personal offense, and so does everybody here. You have attacked a rally that I am co-hosting. You are directly responsible for stripping away the constitutional rights of millions of American citizens that do care and want to stand up and attend this rally, but you fear mongered them into not coming. How could you be so heartless to desecrate our First Amendment constitutionally protected right to peacefully assemble? You have abused your power and platform as Speaker of the House to libel and slander us. You have abused your platform to contaminate the jury pool by calling January 6th detainees killers and saying everyone here today is here to support killers. Nobody was killed that day besides American citizens, and that was not by any detainee. Thank you. And thank you to the mainstream media for saying this was going to be a white supremacy rally. Do I look like a white supremacist to you? I'm Chinese and Italian. I'm a feminist. I voted for Barack Obama twice. I voted for Bill Clinton. And then I voted for Donald Trump twice. That's right. I am not a white supremacist. And I am sick and tired of the narrative that people that support these prisoners and that support justice in America and freedom are white supremacists. It's a means to divide and distract us, and I'm asking you, mainstream media, to please stop dividing and distracting the American people. Please stop dividing and distracting us. We have more in common than we have different, but according to you, we should be enemies. My website is double, and my name is Kara Castronova. Please follow me on social media so that you can get all the information on all the four deaths that they said were natural causes so you can find out the name of the police officer who beat Roseanne Boylan as she lay on the Capitol steps unconscious. We have the video, and there's other video under court order that cannot be released to the public that people have seen where it clearly shows that a Capitol, I mean, sorry, a D.C. Metro police officer beating her senseless. And there's patriots being charged in prison right now for trying to help 
the her and trying to get the police officers off of her. That is why they are being held right now in D.C. prison. It, the website is www.citizensapp.us or www.thepeoplesjanuary6thcommission.com. My name is Kara Kashnova. If you want to see the video, please talk to me after the rally. I have no problem showing it to you. Thank you, Matt Brainerd. This is a peaceful, amazing event, just like he said it would be on the news a lot of times, but you guys, ref you're free to, uh, to report on. Peaceful protests, everybody. Not insurrection part two. Sorry. Thank you so much, Matt, for all you do. Now that's a tough act to follow. And I thank God every day that we found each other and that she has the courage to stand up and do what she did. She did it all on her own. She just woke up one day and saw an injustice and acted. And any one of you can do the same. So I want to make a little reminder. Um, we've got a wonderful security force, the Capitol Police and the other police forces who come far and wide to make sure this is a safe event are doing a fantastic job. Let's have another round of play of I know it's hot out here. I know this is the last thing they want to be doing today, but they're doing their duty, and we're proud of them, and we're grateful. But I want you to also know that you have a role in the security here, too. If you see any funny business, anything suspicious, all of you have a television studio right on your pocket. Take it out. Record it. And if somebody's causing trouble, they're going to have a bad time, and we're going to make them famous, okay? So I appreciate your cooperation in that. Um, so there have been some members of Congress who have been stepping forward and helping to lead in this fight. And we're very grateful to them. They're very grateful to them. Actually, let's have a round of applause for those who went to the prison, who signed letters. But there's a problem. There are far too many who haven't done anything. In fact, there are far too many who are actually lying about what we're doing today, as Kara told you. And in fact, the political leadership has advised them not to participate in our rallies today. Now, I read the Constitution. I think maybe you read the same Constitution I did. My understanding is that the elected officials that we send from our states and congressional districts, that they're supposed to work for us and represent us. That we're their bosses, right? Who is their boss? And I think that some of them have forgotten that. Some of them seem to be more afraid of the political leadership up there than they are of their constituencies. And I mean that in an entirely peaceful way. But you guys, when you go back to your states and hopefully attend some of the 17 or more state rallies we have coming up in the next couple of weeks, you've got to remind them who they work for. Now, we do have two extremely courageous gentlemen. And you know, I'd say even better than a congressman coming to speak are two soon-to-be congressmen. And the amount of coverage, and, and I want to make it clear to you, both of these guys, we out, set out an open call, said, hey, if you're running for office, you're a legit candidate, you want to speak, we'll have you. Both of these guys asked to come. I did not ask them to come here. They reached out to me and said, hey, can we come and speak to the crowd? So first, I'd like to introduce a brave patriot. He's an entrepreneur, a businessman. He started a, a trucking company down in Georgia. He's very brave to be here today because I know that his text messages and emails and voicemails all full of people telling him not to come. It's a false flag because somebody who only exists on the Internet told him it was. But they didn't listen. Instead, they recognized the problem they decided they have to ask. So first, I want to introduce Mike Collins from Georgia. Mike, please come up here. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Now, before I start, I've got a couple things that I want to I want to make perfectly clear. Okay, I strongly condemn political violence in any form, especially the violence that was perpetrated on January the sixth, or anybody who may commit violence here today. Those who committed violent acts should be tried in a court, tried in a court of law, and if convicted, punished accordingly. Also. I'm a strong supporter of our men and women who serve us in law enforcement. And I especially do not support defunding our police. I also support our military. Mil military is stationed all around this world, y'all. 
that are on the front lines protecting, protecting our constitutional rights and our freedoms. Our freedoms, our freedoms are under attack every day, even right here in the United States. You see, our God-given constitutional rights, that's what makes our country great. That's what separates from the other country, from the rest of the world. And it is our government's duty to protect our rights, not to use them or our law enforcement as political pawns to advance an agenda. We are also a nation of laws, and those laws should apply to every American citizen equally, not politically. I chose to attend this rally. I chose to attend this rally in support of our constitutional rights and the laws that govern our nation and the laws that govern those J6 political prisoners that are being held today. Amen. Now, I don't want to pretend to know who's innocent and who's guilty. But I tell you what I do see. I see people who are being held for nonviolent crimes and they deserve their day in court. They deserve to have their Sixth and Eighth Amendments upheld. Otherwise, they do. They are political prisoners. And they are being used to suppress law-abiding American citizens from expressing their First Amendment rights. Now, the current administration, oh, they'd have you believe it. The current day detainees, well, they're being treated just as equally as the protesters on the left. And y'all, that's, that's just not true. What we do have, we have political prisoners here. And the media, well, they're the biggest ally for the left. They want you to believe that, well, this is just another conspiracy theory. But the facts, I'm going to tell you what, the facts are clear. We've got nonviolent misdemeanor offenders that are currently be held, they're being held with no bond, no access to lawyers, and sometimes in solitary confinement. And a lot of them, they're not even slated to see trial until next year. I tell you what, you won't find an example of that from Minneapolis or from when this nation's capital was on fire the summer of 2020. I tell you what, the American people are not stupid. We can see it with our own eyes, the difference in the treatment from our federal government because of someone's political beliefs. And that's regardless, it's regardless of how the news media tries to spin it or the, what they tell you. Y'all, I'm Mike Collins, and I urge, no, I demand that the federal government begin trying those accused, the J6 political prisoners, being detained immediately especially those being held for nonviolent crimes. Thank you. Thank you. Quite a speech. Let's have another round from Mike. That's impressive. I mean, look, think of all the people up here, too stupid and cowardly to come speak to you, but Mike, Mike's not. Mike, Mike has your back. Do we have Mike's back? And I tell you, it's a great privilege to introduce another great patriot. I've known this gentleman since about March, and the moment I heard his story, I couldn't help but have a deep felt respect. This is a man who served our country for 20 years overseas on 11 combat deployments in the Special Forces, and he made the ultimate sacrifice, I think, that he is a gold star husband. He lost his wife, who is fighting for our country in Syria. Now he's running for Congress in Washington's third congressional district. He's a remarkable gentleman, and I, I urge you to heed, listen to and heed his words. Please give us some applause for Joe Kent. Thank you. Thank you all so much for being out here. 
We're all here for the same reason, because we know our brothers and sisters, our fellow Americans, regardless of what walk of life they're from, what political party they're from, have the God-given right to due process. That's in our Constitution. Those rights were given by God, not by man. Man cannot take them away. But we have to fight for them like we're doing right now. We're peacefully out here fighting, making our voices heard. I'm an honor to be a small part of it. I'm out here because, like Matt said in his great introduction, I had the opportunity and the privilege to serve this country for a little bit over 20 years. And when I was serving this country, the thing that I had in common with those I went to war with was that we are all Americans. Our political leaders, they didn't think twice about sending us off on useless, endless wars that were of no gain. But all of us joined. All of us fought. Many of us died. Many of us still carry the scars from war for one reason. We believe in this country. We believe in that flag. We believe in everything that it stands for. And when there is an injustice done to any of our brothers and sisters, our fellow citizens, when their constitutional rights are taken, if we do not speak out against that, we are guilty of standing by and watching those rights erode. Make no mistake, what governments do overseas, they will do here, and they've already started. It's banana republic stuff when political prisoners are arrested and denied due process. That happens overseas all the time. Unfortunately, we conducted operations like that when I was in Iraq serving overseas, and it did nothing but further radicalize people. It is very dangerous. We, our founders gave us protections in our Constitution to make sure that those things did not happen here in America. But that is running off the rails right now because too many Americans just think that it's not their business. I'm not part of that political party, so I'll let those guys get detained and have their due process denied. That's not the way this works. This is a slippery slope, and we are on it right now. And if we don't start fighting back and pushing back, call your elected officials, call your representatives, show up at every single rally that Look, like, Look Ahead America is having for these political prisoners. Be their voice, because it's not even just about them. It's about our forefathers who gave us these rights, who fought, who fought the revolution. It's about every single veteran who's ever deployed overseas, who's ever been killed. It's for everyone in Arlington National Cemetery. And it's for all these law enforcement officers, too. The law enforcement officers are on the front lines every single day defending our rights. They're defending our rights, putting their lives on the line day in, day out. I'm extremely grateful for all of them that are here today. I'm extremely grateful for all of them that were present on January 6th. They are not our enemies. Our, our enemies are those that will deny people of their constitutional rights and then take a narrative that labels all of us as terrorists or insurrectionists for just questioning things. It's our, it's our God-given right and duty as American to, re, to actually question things, to question the narrative. That's our job. I can't thank all of you enough for being out here. Keep the shoulder to the wheel. We are the majority of the country. Keep speaking out. We will take this country back. God bless America. Thank you. USA! 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 Hey, Robert, we ready to start rolling pictures and stuff? Okay. So um, I want to show you guys, uh, I want to show you guys the insurrection. Robert, give us, give us A. Let's, put, let's see A on the screen. Now, I don't know if you guys can see that quite from the sunlight. It looks like the picture's a little cropped. But that's Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez leading, no, 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 do not boo her. No, 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 we're not booing, we're not booing people today, okay? We're not booing people. But uh, that is her insurrection, right, at the Speaker's office, interfering with government business, trespassing, parading. Let's see the next picture. B, let's go to B, Robert. This man has not been accused of violence. This man has not been accused of destruction of property. He has been accused of dressing horribly, I think. Uh, it's a matter of opinion. But what he did that day, and if anybody did anything similar, does not deserve nine months in solitary confinement without conviction, no conviction, nine months in prison. Denied bail, denied medical care. He is suffering. In fact, his mother was going to come speak to us today. 
but she was intimidated out of her First Amendment rights, out of fear, out of all the fear-mongering surrounding this. So all of you are out here for her because she could not be out here. Let's go to the next, let's go to C, because this is kind of the point. Let's go to C2, C2, Robert. I'm sorry, let's go to B2, Robert, let's go to B2. Now, I put that up there because I showed you one picture, and I showed you the second picture, and the truth is it's the same picture. It's people exercising the First Amendment rights in the wrong way. And I admit it's stupid, and I admit there should be a penalty to it. I support it. The thing is, is that historically, at the Kavanaugh hearings, where people were arrested over and over again for storming the Senate office building, they stormed the hearings. They were arrested, bailed out, went back and did the same thing that day, over and over again. It's the same picture. Now, Robert, let's see C. I know, because it's a meme. A and B are the same picture. That's the joke. I... Forgive me if that one went over anybody's head. A and B, AOC, and our shaman friend. It's the same picture. They're doing the same thing, engaging the same behavior, but very different outcome. Why? Not because of what they did, but because of what they believe. That is unconstitutional. That is immoral. And that's what makes them political prisoners. So let's go to image, let's go to image C, please. Now, whenever the media... Whenever I've been interviewed lately, the media always likes to run this footage next to me of the most violent moments of the rallies, of the protests on January 6th. Even though I expressly say anybody engaged in violence belongs in prison, we're solely here for the folks who have not been charged with any kind of violence activity, assault, or destruction of property. They always run the B-roll next to me because that's how disingenuous they are. That's just how they operate, right? Can't do anything about it, really. But that's pretty much, those are the people we're talking about. These are folks who are assembled in statuary tall, being peaceful. Now, Robert, let's see, let's see image D, please. So those are people illegally assembled in that building being rounded up by police officers with zip ties. They were all released that day and fined between $35 and $50. Now, I'm tr the message I'm trying to send here is that this disparate treatment that I seem to have to explain to every reporter like six or seven times, they don't seem to get it, so maybe some pictures will help them, because I know that everybody that showed up here on behalf of LAA, you all understand this. This is real. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, picture E, please. Again, this image is from a hearing room, interfering with government business. This is the same thing that the political prisoners have been charged with. Yet they've had the FBI break into their house. It's not the individual agent's fault, really. It's, it's their orders and the political leadership back behind me and at the Department of Justice. But those people are having their doors kicked in and being rounded up in the middle of the night and dragged to Washington, D.C., denied bail, have their lives destroyed, losing their homes, losing their jobs, in some cases losing their marriages because of the stress of it all. These people did exactly the same thing, released that day. No one called it an insurrection. The media barely reported on it. And when they did report on it, it was favorably. Uh, Robert, let's roll video F, please. Let's roll video F. We're only going to roll it for the first couple of minutes. Turn up the volume, please, if you can. So this is footage. I can annotate it. This is footage of President Trump's inauguration. It's a large crowd clad in all black, violently attacking the police, trying to penetrate the lines, the secure border where the inauguration was taking place. They assaulted police officers. They destroyed property. They actually injured a journalist and his sound guy. Cars were destroyed. Businesses were destroyed. Now, we never heard the word insurrection. We never really heard too much about it. Now, 200 of these people were actually charged with violence, assaulting police officers, destruction of property, etc. Over 200 of them had all charges dropped. Are you getting it now? Are you journalists who ask this question over and over again seven or eight times? Are you getting it now? Can I make it any more obvious? That is exactly what this rally is about. It's not about the people who are violent that day. I'll say it, I'll say it all day long. We condemn that. Those people belong in prison. But I actually have a friend who uh, showed up a few hours after the original perimeters were breached. He walked into the building. Nobody stopped him. The doors were open. He walked all through it, walked, you know, took pictures, investigated, walked out. 
Now, the FBI isn't going to visit him. He's not going to be prosecuted because he has sort of a get-out-of-jail-free card because he was a member of the press. No, 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 we're not booing anybody today, okay? We're not booing our press. They're our friends today. Not right now. No, but the point is, is that anybody showing up late or not knowing what they're doing or getting caught up in the moment could easily have been could easily have fallen into that trap. Could easily have. And as did many violent protesters at Kavanaugh, when AOC stormed the speaker's office, and something you guys never even heard about. Two months ago, environmental protesters blockaded the White House. Sunshine group or something. They were arrested and released that day. No long-term consequences, no FBI visits, no lost jobs. In fact, when the, report, with the little media that did cover them reported them mostly as heroes. We cannot have a two-tier justice system in this country based on what you believe in. I don't care what your political stripe is. It's intolerable, and we're going to stand up and continue fighting for these people. And look, I also happened to talk to uh, my good friend who's here, my new friend from MSNBC, Ms. Yasmin. I asked her a question yesterday. I said to her, you know, the Capitol Police um, leadership, you know, it, they announced that uh, six officers have been sanctioned after 30 investigations into their behavior on January 6th. Now, I asked her, do you know what they were sanctioned for? I got a blank stare back. And the reason it's not her fault is because they haven't said. It's just an ambiguous press release saying six officers were uh, sanctioned, had their careers damaged for something that happened on January 6th. That's the same problem that we're pointing to. When, and, he, and here's the thing. Maybe what they were sanctioned for, maybe that's unjust too. Maybe they're just like our brothers and sisters in the prisons. Maybe they're fa facing sanctions for political reasons or being scapegoated. We don't know. We demand transparency, and we demand that the 14,000 hours of videotape of what happened on that day is released. And I ask, I ask our friends in the media, I remember, uh, hold, hold on, I remember, I'm a little older, I remember there was an allegation of religious text being flushed down a toilet in Guantanamo Bay. Now that was a story for weeks, and it was covered despite the fact that the media knew that it would result in violent reaction in Iraq and elsewhere against our troops and get our troops killed. They knew that, but they still put it out there. They still put it out there, God bless them. Now I just wish they would have the same fortitude when it comes to demanding the release of these 14,000 hours of videotape. It seems like the kind of thing the media would be curious about. It seems like they should be our allies. I mean, most FOIA requests are filed by journalists. And they need to demand to know exactly what those 30 charges were, how they were adjudicated. We're on the same side here, guys. So I want to cl close with something here, because I don't want to keep you guys too long. And I want to get everybody out here safely, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But I want to applaud you for a moment, because it took real courage to come out here today. I, you have my respect, and I also am internally grateful to each of you for trusting me. Because I was the one that told you to come out here. I was the one that told you you get here safely. It wasn't a false flag. And so many voices on the left called you killers and slandered you. And so many of the... I called them armchair patriots on the right, said this was a false flag attack, and that you shouldn't come. And my inbox is full. I, every, I, I constantly hear from people, you should call it off. Don't do it. But you stood up. You withstood that. And I, look, what is, this is about a very important cause, but it's also broadly about something much more important, because the political leadership in this country, it's a dirty secret, okay? When you are upset about a political problem, and you're angry, they actually want you to do what happened on January 6th. They want violence from us. They want us to cross the line. They want us to destroy property. They want us angry. Because when you break the law, they can deal with you very easily, as you've seen. They send the FBI after you go into the gulag. Especially if you're guilty, you deserve it. But that's what they want, because it's easy to deal with the political opposition that's violent. But what's the lesson that we've learned from people like Gandhi? or Martin Luther King, or the civil rights movement in this country. I'll tell you what terrifies them. This is what terrifies them. A peaceful assembly of the America first right. We're operating within the law. We respect the Constitution. We love the First Amendment. We love our police officers who have a very difficult job. 
when we show up at school board meetings and use our First Amendment rights, when we educate our state legislators, when we come to Washington and demand justice, peacefully, orderly, this is what terrifies them. This is why they didn't want you to come. But we're not going to be stopped. Peaceful community organizing from this day forward belongs to us. And I know, I know that many here, many watching are upset about the election. I understand it. I'm upset too. But the reaction that we saw on January 6th, it was stupid. It was wrong. And what I'm asking you, you know, anger is dangerous. Anger gets turned inward. It's self-destructive. And it spills out and becomes destructive in the world. What I'm asking you to do is to take your anger and channel it into something productive. And to channel it into working as a volunteer with Look Ahead America or, or Citizens Against Political Prosecution. Work within the law. Work peacefully. Do not give up on our Constitution. Do not give up on our country. Do not give up on voting. Do not give up on petitioning our government. Take that energy and give it to Look Ahead America. Help us make this a better country. Help us save this country. Help us fix our election system. Help us get justice. Help us, help us get our schools to respect our history and our founders. Sign up with us. Volunteer with us at lookaheadamerica.org. We will put you to work, and it will be difficult. Difficult to stand outside a Costco for 30 minutes or for three hours in the hot sun to register new voters. That's difficult, especially when they constantly kick us out. And if anybody knows the CEO of Costco, I'd like to chat with him because we're doing God's work. They should be nice to us. Those are our people at Costco. It's hard to register voters. It's hard to write letters. It's hard to come out on a date. It's easy to sit behind a computer and type and spread disinformation and fear. That's easy. Coming out here is hard, and you will forever have my respect for coming out here today. You will forever be, have my gratitude. And if you ever happen to cash me out in the civilian world, tap me on the shoulder. I owe you a beer. Not today, though. Not all at once, please. My wife will kill me. So look, may God bless you. And before we go again, I can't emphasize this enough because these guys are trying to, persuade, trying to portray us as standing up for killers and people who assaulted police officers. We hate that. We'd never do that. Anybody who's, who's ever done anything like that does not belong in this movement, is condemned by Look Ahead America. We condemn it. We condemn it. We condemn it. But this is about disparate treatment of the nonviolent people. This is about the lack of transparency. This is about the great cause that Kara said, indicated that there may have been additional victims that day, and we need transparency. We need that video. Release the video. Let's get a cheer going. Maybe the journalists will join in with this, because this is First Amendment stuff, right? Come on, journalists. Release the video. 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 It's the First Amendment thing, folks. Don't worry. Yasmin, if you start cheering with us, I won't tell your boss. We won't get you fired for cheering with us. So I want to bring things to a close here, but I, want, I, I do want one more round of applause because, look, a lot of the guys that are out here today, you know, they're doing their best, they're doing their job, they're ordered here by political leadership who uh, I, I appreciate everyone keeping us safe today. I'm a little bit of overkill, but, look, I respect it. I, hey, I'm in the business of community organizing, okay? That's what I am. I'm an America First community organizer, and someday all of you will be too. But setting up and, and keeping us all safe, you know, that's not, that's not my area of expertise. I really respect the people who came out. The Capitol Police have done a wonderful job communicating with us, letting us know. I want to thank I, – I actually would like to thank the individual officers by name, but that will only get them in trouble. So they know who they are, the ones we've been talking to and Ms. Kimmy have been working with. Um, you have our eternal gratitude and respect. So let's have a round of – for all of the police officers out here today – from Virginia, from Maryland, from, I think they flew in a SWAT team from Puerto Rico. They were so worried about us. And I want to give us some exit instructions, okay? So D.C. is uh, historically a pretty dangerous city. What I'm asking you to do is as you, I want you to leave. We're going to play exit music, and my good, friend, my good new friend Robert knows what we're going to play on exit. On your way out. Give a smile and a wave to any cop you see, okay? Just give them a smile and wave. 
Tell them we appreciate their service. Any journalists, just smile, but keep on walking. But stay in groups, at least until you get out of the District of Columbia, because believe it or not, unlike other rallies, I take your safety personally. It's my personal responsibility, and I'm going to be the last one to leave here along with my security team. So the sooner you get out of here, the sooner I can get out of here, and we're going to do this again someday, and we're going to keep fighting. This battle doesn't end today. In fact, I think this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the America First Right taking over community organizing in this country. I'm so proud of you, I could cry. I'm so proud of you all. So, God bless you all. Leave in large groups. If you see somebody walking out alone, say, hey, uh, why don't you come with us? At least until you're out of the District of Columbia. And uh, I want you to stay safe. And look, again, you had to ignore a lot of people that, tell, that told you not to come today. You heard it from everywhere. But I want you to go back out there and tell them that we're not giving up on this. We're not giving up on protest culture. We're not giving up on petitioning our government. We're not giving up on the First Amendment. And we're not going to be tempted by the dark voices saying that apathy and even violence are the only answers. We reject that. And you go back home and you told them you, come to you came today and you tell them what, they, what you saw. And anybody that told you that this was a false flag attack or a trap or anything like that, remember their names and never trust them again. God bless you all. America first. America forever. Now go home, please. Thank you. So this is the justice for the J6 protest. The J6, the justice for those arrested on January 6th who are still in the DC jail, apparently. Um, this was a protest in support of them. Oh, this is a guy calling for Trump to be arrested. And here comes the swarm of media. It's an anti-Trump guy. This guy wants to fight. CBS News is uh, main Capitol Hill correspondent. I've seen her before. I can't remember her name. This guy, that guy screams. This guy screams security. <laughs> I'm sure CBS brought their own security. He's got room in the White House. They're gonna sell my house for back taxes. I'm gonna need a place to live. I hear Lincoln's room is available. So they could say it was a deadly riot. That person happened to be a Air Force veteran and mother of two, Ashley Babbitt. The Trump supporters are terrorists. All Trump supporters are homegrown terrorists. Get their ass out to get more. And Black Lives Matter, were you at the rallies last summer? Or? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I was there when Trump held the Bible up, upside down. I was, I was, I'm out here every day. So, yeah, I was there for that. The vibe is uh, overkill from the side of the police. There's way too much uh, police presence uh, dressed in militaristic kind of gear, which I don't like. Uh, there's more police here than there are people at the rally by far. Put Trump in the 
There are like 20 or 30 camera crews for every actual protester. Up there is Falcon, Capital, uh, U.S. Police, D.C. Police. It's rare that Falcon gets to fly over the Capitol. This guy's going nuts. In there is about 50% protesters, 50% press at best. I mean, it might even be more press. Cops are showing up. Cops have taken him away. Cops are taking him away. Well, got rid of all the press. Yeah, I speculated that dude in black was CBS security. See that guy? He's guarding this uh, anchor one, basically. See, CBS is uh, Capitol Hill correspondent. They're not political prisoners. They're all terrorists. All Trump supporters that insurrect the Capitol, you are not political prisoners. You are fucking domestic terrorists. So I think there's some protest, counter-protesters down this way. I was telling him that uh, I, I don't need protected and please let me distract MAGA and don't let me distract you, but uh, they said I either had to go or, you know, got to be arrested, basically. So uh, I had to come down here. 
no, I'm, I'm good with that. They, I, they're very, uh, very dependable and uh, uh, just saying, it was, it was, it was what they wanted. So I'm like, okay.